everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, and today I want to show you how you can create for yourself at home, step by step, this angel of love gnome. Isn't he adorable? He's got cute roses, and he's just so sweet, and he's perfect for all kinds of things on your wall. He's easier to paint than you think. He's completely focused for beginners. I'm going to break down every technique, every color mix, every tool that I use, so you can follow along at home. To help me do this is my husband, John. Hello. I'll be the disembodied voice that you hear during the video. Uh, but he makes sure that the cameras are pointing at what I'm doing and that um, I'm always sharing with you what you might need to know at home so you can get the best possible result. You saw the materials go by in the video, but those are also in the description down below, imp including important links. If you're here for the live, be sure to put your questions all in caps so the moderators can help answer those. Um, if you're here later, be sure just put the questions in the comments down below. I check old videos, so whether you found this as I released it for the stream or later on, I am here to help you. This painting is easier than you think. It's very beginner friendly. I think you can do it, but I'd like to prove that to you. So get your paint, get your brushes, and come back and meet me at this easel. I'm going to show you how to paint this. So the first part of this, John, is mm -hmm. we're going to be just painting in the background. The background is going to be an ombre of a light blue to a darker blue. Ombre. Pretty, ombre. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. All right. So I've got my 16 by 20. I have titanium white in phthalo blue out already. I'm going to take, this is a one and a half inch brush. I'm going to get a little bit wet. And I'm actually going to load up my white paint first. Interestingly enough. And you know what else I'm going to do? Mm. Splatter guard. Oh, good call. Splatter guard, because this will be a splattering technique. So if you do this at home and you get a big brush and you're getting a little bit of splatter, pretty normal. It's the part here at the edges of the canvas that sort of flick off some paint into everything else. All right, so I'm actually painting this uh, white down here at first, and then I'm going to take a little smidge. Look at me sneaking into that blue. Uh huh. Sneaking in, because phthalo blue is a very staining color. And I'm going to just blend a little bit of that light blue down into the white. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. So that's a nice way to make sure we got the light color. As I come up, it'll go uh, kind of a darker blue. So I'll come up above my lighter color a little bit and then bring it back down, blending into. See how I'm protecting the ombre by doing that? I do. And I have the canvas loose so that I don't lose this little bit up here. Ah, gotcha. And then I'm going to tag it down. I'm kind of blending this down into a V, and that's because we know that the uh, roses and things are in a V. Oh. So we're going to V that up. V. To V or not to V? <laughs> that was an 80s television series. It was. And a 90s no. one, too, because they brought it back. Was it, it was in 90s as well, huh? Yeah, because they brought it back. All right. It's okay that I had a little boo-boo here. I'll just kind of blend that out. It doesn't hurt anything because it's going to be covered by a lot of flowers. I'm going to go up, and you can see just into a slightly more robust blue. I do kind of curve my strokes here. I like that. I feel that gives some uh, personality to my background. It's not strictly necessary. It's just a thing I got in the habit of doing on this type of background. I see. This has a lot more uh, water and stuff in it. So I've got to be sort of careful getting this in. You can see sometimes I kind of work the brush into the surface. Yeah. Where I know everything's kind of in that same color. Just making sure that everything is coated with the blue paint. If you guys don't want to frame, you can paint the edges of your surface. Ooh, the gallery painty thing. Yeah. Well, you can paint the edges. So, not really gallery. It's not really a gallery wrap, but it, you know, it works well enough as one to, yeah. to suffice. All right. So, let's clamp back down. We should have a little bit of a light to darker blue sky. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. I'm going to rinse this brush out well. 
because I don't want it to die. Yeah. Um, if you're at home, it's sometimes good to do your background brushes, like break for a second, go wash them, and then come back to the painting project. This layer has to dry anyways. Yep. So sometimes uh, that sort of studio maintenance allows paintings to dry. You don't even have to use a hairdryer. In this case, I'm going to use my hair dryer through the magic of video. You won't be drugged through that. <laughs> if yours is taking longer to dry than mine, just pause the video. Chat will go on as needs, you know, or well, if you're here after chat, it doesn't even matter. So pause it, paint, and then come back and we'll, we'll like be doing the next step. What? The next step? You're doing great. Come on. Let's do the next step. So in this step, uh, you're either going to use the traceable or you're going to follow along as I show you how to draw in the gnome. Mm. So I am going to be demonstrating it. I'm going to use paint so you can really see it um, this time. If you're not comfortable drawing, the traceables are free. You download them from the website. Um, it's easier to downsize the painting to an 8 by 10 which is the same aspect ratio, and use the traceable. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you've got to be good at the tile feature on your printer, which if you are, then by all means, tile away and have a big 16 by 20 thing. <laughs> so however you want to do it, but just in case you want to know how to draw it in, I'm going to show you. I'm going to use a big round brush. Well, this is a medium round brush. This is a number 8 silver uh, black pearl round, and I'm going to just kind of sketch this in. First, I'm going to start with white because that'll show up nicely over the blue. And let's come up here into the upper left. I'm going to put a little dot. I want at least two fingers at the top of my heart. And come and do one side. And I'm going to come and do the other side. This is a balloon, so it's unfortunately going to be a little bit symmetrical. Mm. And it's kind of its pain that it has going on. Now, middle of the canvas, middle of the canvas, right? Boom, boom. Make a little circle. That wasn't too bad, right? Come off to the left. About four fingers, make a little line. Come off to the right, make a little line. Hey, John, I just got my left and right correct. <laughs> That's pretty exciting, actually, for me. It is a right. rarity. Now I'm going to come up on the little hat, an inch or so, come in. Another little bit, come in. These are the wrinkles and stuff on the hat. Because mm -hmm. my gnomes always have little crumply hats. You know, and you got to love the crumple. There we go. Little crumple hat. On this side of the hat at the corner, I'm going to kind of come down and talk a little bit about a beard. It sort of curves out and goes to point. You don't have to be perfect with this, guys, because the beard and a lot of it is covered with the roses. Oh, yeah. Because he's holding a balloon, this is one of the few times i got to give my gnome a hand. <laughs> so I'm going to come out and make a little outward arc from the corner of the hat to the mid-body. Kind of like a... And then a mitten shape. A mitten hand. Because Lord knows we don't need to be drawing no hands. <laughs> no this side has one, too, but chances are going to be painted over by roses. So don't be too worried about it. The wings, however, I'm going to do in black and white, the angel wings. Because this is a love gnome. Mm. This is, a, well, it's a love angel or angel of love, however you want to think of it. So I'm going to do this kind of in gray at first, and then I'll come back detailing with white. When I'm doing the individual feathers, you know, I'll be doing that with the white. Start with the gray first. Look at this go. Yeah. This isn't bad. No. A little bit of a wing here. Make sort of the brush strokes go down the directionality. Of where the feathers will be. We actually kind of detail the feathers in later. Oh. Um, one little detail of a feather that we do now, though, is maybe here, here. And here. Mm. Right? So we're kind of showing that they're there off the edge. Same thing, other side. Gray again. 
Ray. <laughs> You'll be putting angel wings on everything once you see this process of doing it. You'll be like, wait, what? And I'll be like, I know. So lovely to do angel wings. I like making them in the snow. I know you do. You love making the snow angels. Okay. Same on this side as I did on the other side where I come in and maybe a little bit of gray. There we go. The other place that I can put in gray now yeah. is the beard. Ooh. Yeah, I can put in a base level of gray on the beard right now. And I can come back with white later. To create the feeling of hair. Beard hair. Mm. It's hair, right? Uh, I, I think, think it's so. hair. Facial hair. That's what they say. Facial hair. Yeah. Holy hair. It's all. I think humans have hair, not fur. Thank fur goodness. grows to I'm a so certain. I'm so glad that my shedding is to a minimum. <laughs> yeah, because I think that fur sheds and grows to a certain length, whereas hair continues to grow. So, like, we have one hairy dog and one furry dog. Speaking of, the hairy dog hasn't come by for her usual show visit where she's anxious. That's true. She's, <laughs> where she's she, like, do you love me? She had a good play today. She did. She had a very good play. So it's pretty simple with this stuff. Yeah, there's still some blue showing through and stuff like that, and that is okay. Um, if you have very student paint, like you bought very economical paint, like in a set, like you've got Liquitex Basics or Artist Loft Level 1, um, something like that, or craft paint, you may want to paint the hat and the heart and the arms white so that your uh, colors are vibrant. Um, sometimes uh, that's how manufacturers save money on the paint is having less pigment. I have a ton, so I get to like power through. Mm -hmm. But that's my tip to you at home. If you if you have some like not professional paint, go ahead and hit the hat in white and the heart in white and the little mittens in white. Yeah. All right. When we come back, I'll show you the next step. So now we're going to put in the pinks in the areas where they go on the gnome. And one of the things I want to remind you at home is if you have a question, put it all in caps, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, so that um, our moderators can help you find those resources. I might even come in and answer. You never know. Remember, if you're here on replay, it's okay to ask questions then. Even if you find this video a year later, it's all right to ask a question. I am around, always checking my channel to make sure that I'm there for my students. Are you guys ready to put in the pink? I know you got this. You have yes. this. They have this. Yes, they do. They have. You have it. Yeah. All right, let's come in and do this. So I'm going to use a big, bright brush. Big, bright brush. Actually, it's just a medium. It's a one inch. It's like about an inch in width. This particular one is a number 20 to Argini by Raphael. It's a hog brush, which means it uses the bristles. Like, like remember the hog bristle brushes? Uh-huh. Yeah, same thing. And I'm going to take my cad red. And my titanium white, and just kind of paint this in a pinky coral. Ooh, pinky coral. Right. And the white will help cover. The cad red's pretty, pretty covering. So between these two, right, because I'm using real cad red pigment and real titanium white, that I'm going to get some good coverage. Again, if you're not getting good coverage, stop, paint everything white, dry it, and then go. I don't always know what paint you guys have at home, and I certainly don't expect you to paint with what I'm painting with. Not the brands, not not really anything exact the same. I just assume that you're just painting along, doing your own thing, having a great time. Hopefully with friends and family. But maybe maybe just hanging out on your own, being like, this is my art room, this is my time, I need a little creativity. Yeah, so... Just in case you have something different in the studio. Now you can see, even with mine, there's a little bit of the blue showing through. But by the time I'm done with the layers, it won't matter at all. Yeah. 
I get my brush very lightly damp. And the reason I do lightly damp is uh, just because a hog tends to hold more water. I like this uh, painting because it's got simple colors in it. Yeah. Um, and that means like whatever you guys are painting with at home, it probably will work with the painting. I use the edge of the brush to have a little control over my lines. All right. So I paint this little edge here. Yeah. And I just go over my, whether it's tracing lines or painted lines, that's what we're going over and just sort of filling it all in. In this kind of middle coral. We'll come back with darker and lighter. Right now we're going to be just in the metal coral. A little bit of a hat here. I like the little bit going down, don't you? Mm-hmm. If you like this gnome, I have a bunch of gnomes, like a bunch. Um, the astrology gnomes are going to get done this year, so those will get finished. Um, I think we were up to Taurus, <laughs> so they'll kick back on uh, at Gemini, which actually had the coolest design for that, so that'll be really fun. We're probably going to start putting all of the gnome things in their in, in a new home for themselves. Yeah, that's what John wants. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, just, it would be another place to find them. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. We'll let you guys know if we do. For all things gnome. If we do an all things gnome, we'll let you guys know. Now, I also want to paint the um, jacket and mittens. Ooh. Oops. So I'm going to come down here. Jacket. And mitten. Maybe I'll go a little darker on the mitten. Maybe not. It depends. <laughs> well, this is layer one. Well, it really is layer one. And layer one is a very important layer in acrylic paint because it's what makes everything else look right. Kind of sets the stage. Sets the stage. I may also come in and kind of get the nose, mm. maybe a lighter pink. This will be great later when I come in with the flesh tone, which is really just the cad yellow and the cad red. Yeah. But uh, this will make that easy to do later. This was an easy step. Yeah. It's almost like. It was simple enough to do the time warp. So, um, I'm fine. <laughs> like, like three people were like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> we're just painting that little arm. And you can see the arm's a pretty simple shape, right? Yeah. Things can be a simple shape and be great. And remember, don't get too hung up here because we have so many roses we're filling in of our loose uh, Easy Beginner roses. So you don't want to, like, make yourself uh, stressed or unhappy with it. I'll make sure that all my white is covered. I could also come back with blue and white. Rinse out your brush. Rinsey, 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 rinse. Um, I'm going to dry at this stage, but the reason that I'm drawing is so that I don't get my hand in wet paint when I'm doing the wings and the beard. Mm. So you could let it organically dry if you don't have that problem, but I sometimes have problems getting myself into my paint. But sometimes I dry just to manage my mess. That's true. All right. So we're going to dry and we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to do wings and beard. So as I'm going, I'm going to be showing you the beard and the wings. The wings are interesting because to do feathers, it's similar to doing scaling, which means you go from the bottom up, layering each layer on top of that. 
I'm looking at the beard and I'm realizing I want to add some pink down here mm. to just imply the robe goes a little bit further. Oh. So I'm going to hit that right now while everything is having a dry. I'm going to get real light pink, though. Right? Really, really light pink, which I'm going to come in and do the other the uh, rest of the sleeve in. But I just want to have some nice light pink, John. I get it. Again, roses are going to be here, so you just have this for where it peaks out. If that makes sense to, to everybody. You're just yes. This is just here for where it peaks out, not for being perfect or anything. Other than me having a little uh, trouble with my focus here. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I see that you're matching today. I am matching today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I had a little thought about matching today, so I matching. thought I would match. I like today. it. All right, so that will give that a dry, right? Yeah, and then we'll come back, and that little bit of pink there peeking out with the beard, even though it's all covered by roses, it'll just make the painting look nicer. Let's yeah. get into these feathers. Okay. So I'm going to put out a little more clean white because you really want clean white for the feathers because it's the contrast. Oh sure. Right. Between the gray and the uh, white of the feather. We're so lucky to have titanium white. We really are. It's such a bright white. And used to be such a difficult color for paint manufacturers, which is why they had that horrible lead white, which just killed everybody involved. It did. It was a super white white, though. It, too, is like one of those, you know, it's a cool color, but, man, it has like uh Now, what happened there is I got my brush a little bit too Ooh. wet. So yep. what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... Thumb it? Yeah, I'm going to come back up and just put it back in. Again, finger painted. it's going to not really matter because these are all going to be covered by... Um, yeah, all the metal whites are cool, but I think they're dangerous. They're all very dangerous. Because I think that aluminum oxide turns white too, but there's a reason why they don't use it for paint. You can see this is just a nice quick way to do a wing. Just watch that water content. Because it gets drippy? gets drippy. You could apply these gnome wing techniques to anything. Pets. <laughs> uh, yes, your birds. It's the same basic concept. We just spend a little more detailed time working those layers, but it's really the same thing. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to... Just again, and remember, we've got so many flowers coming up here, so this isn't the place to get too bogged in the details. Yeah. I can see just pulling those little I layers like those, up. Yeah. And it just gives you a little bit of that feathering effect. So now we're going to come here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some light color in the beard, and then I'll come back with some dark color. All right. So let's come here and on the toe of the brush, just make some downward strokes in the middle of the beard. Still on that number eight, just using the titanium white. Just layering it up. You can see that the gray is helpful for letting it have a little bit of depth. Oh, yeah. This is the don't panic stage. I might come into my nose a little bit just so that I have a nice line out from the beard. Now, I'm going to go back into my black. Still the same brush. I haven't changed. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to just shade some of this coming out of the nose and out of the hat. Kind of come up here from the edges. 
Doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let that have a bit of a dry. And I think that really for the next bit of finishing work, I want the wings and the beard to be dry. Mm -hmm. So let's break this into two steps. And then that way you guys know, oh, I've really got to dry it to yeah. finish it. So let's That's break it into two steps, dry it thoroughly, and then I'll show you the finishing work. So you want to dry that way what we do next really pops and shows uh, and it lets us kind of bring the detailing in. I put out some more titanium white. Um, just so that I have that. But first I'm going to go in with my round brush in a kind of a darker gray. And I'm going to come into the feathers and give them a little bit of an outline. On the toe. Can you see them just on the toe of that? Yeah. Just kind of detailing them a little bit. And you can see why I wanted them to be somewhat dry for this part. I'm going to do the other side. It just gives it a little bit of zhuzh. Mm -hmm. It's the silver lining. Well, even white, you know, casts shadows. So if, even if you're painting one on white, you've still got to paint value. I'm going to just make sure that I've got a little bit more in here. I'm going to rinse out. I'm letting all this dry over here. All right. I'm going to come into my white and get a nice amount of white in. Really load that up. And I'll thin it enough where it'll flow off my brush on the heavy body paint. If you're doing craft paint, you don't really have to do that. But if you're doing heavy body acrylic, sometimes you have to thin it with water to get it to flow. Now, I've got something that I've noticed here that I've, after watching a couple of beards, it took me a minute to catch that you were doing. Hmm. Okay. Sure, sure. So. You've created this beautiful, fluffy roundness mm -hmm. to his beard by, or her beard, we don't know, it's a gnome, um, because it's f the way that you had the curvature of those brush strokes and the highlight. So it makes this roundy out by creating that, uh, yeah. those layers of effects. And, you know, it takes it from a very flat beard to a very roundy beard. I agree. And I think the trick here is just come into the edges and work delicately and build up. You can always come back with gray it's so easy. When you're working black and white like this, right, it's very easy to go back and adjust and adjust and adjust. You don't really have to like stroke. And again, I'm being a little fussy down here, but I know I'm going to have a, a bunch of roses. So it's kind of I, I like the fluffy irrelevant. Round beard. But I think it'll look really good on this particular gnome. Usually have their beards blowing somewhere, but this time I was like, no blow. This right. is serious love gnome. <laughs> yeah, it's an angel love gnome. Well, you know, we're going to do a couple angels. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for it, and I think people have a lot of reason to paint that. So I wanted to make sure that I did that. Now I'm going to come in with a white highlight see. on the feathers. You know, I might put one there and there just to, even if you don't outline it, you can kind of fill it in. Like if you're like, oh, that needs a little more, you just pop them in, right? They're just wings. They're angelic wings, right? Mm -hmm. Gnome-gelic. I very much uh, love painting angels. Don't do it enough. I do it more. I always believe I should never drive faster than my guardian angel can fly. Mm. 
And I feel like my guardian angel like got like the bummer job. <laughs> like, it was like, really? That one's always doing something crazy. Because <laughs> I used to always be doing something crazy. I think now it's pretty calm. It's like, just watch me paint. That's making up for the early times. Making up for those early times. I got to make up with my guardian angel because like I worked my poor angel to deffers. So this my, is my very favorite. Um, Angel painting is a, uh, and I hope I have this name right because you guys should look it up. Is Thomas Blackshear? Um, I'm not necessarily as a philosopher or reverend or any of that because I don't really know enough about that to say yes to that or no to that. No, nothing. But for the art, I'm insane for I, it. I love this idea mm. that no matter what your philosophy may be, that you get to give your guardian spirits mm -hmm. a moment of rest to watch you paint. <laughs> Just be like, I mean, whether you've got, you know, a comedic sidekick or like a serious, I'm on, I'm watching you kind of. Yeah. They're all getting a break. It's so. super de duper truth. Look at that. We're getting some nice little, nice little wings going. Oops. I just paint it till I'm happy with it. You know, the lines are there, but they're not overwhelming. I'm pretty sure that my guardian angel angel is one of my Irish ancestors who says, nah, you'll live through it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure your guardian angel is very <laughs> uninvolved, too. No, no, definitely involved. <laughs> I have survived some stuff. Okay. But I'm just saying. I guess that's true. Like when that woman threw you off the hood of her car just, into the <laughs> barrier. Yeah. We're just going to say I have had some experiences, but. At the same time, there's been some hard knocks along the way. Uh, just stay off of people's cars is what I'm asking you. Motorcycles, yeah. cars. There's a whole lot of things I should stay away from. But. You, know, you just work that until you feel like, oh, I like my wings. They make me happy. That's as far as you have to take them. You just go until you're like done. And uh, your beard until you're like done. And come back. We're going to add more details. So I want you guys to know that you're doing great and you're okay. This is a weird stage of a painting. We call this the underpainting, mm -hmm. which means we're sort of in the early stages and things can look awkward. So if you're feeling like your painting is awkward, know that it's completely normal. <laughs> and we all feel those feelings in the middle of the painting. I want to do the heart now, John. All right. I think we're going to enjoy doing that. So I added quinacridone magenta to uh, my palette just in case I want to deepen the heart with that. And I'm going to get, um, I'll start with the same number 20 bright that I used from earlier. And the first thing that I'll do is I'll get some cad red mixed with maybe a little quinacridone magenta. And I'm going to come over here on the side, coming on the edge of the brush, as you do, as somebody do. <laughs> like kind of blend do. it out. And I'll just use the edge of the bristles to see and kind of feather that out. And we're going to just make this little balloon. Sometimes at the end of the balloon, they have a uh, little tie. So I want to make sure before I put the little um, rubber thing in that I add a little tie to the bottom of the balloon. Balloons generally come together on the reflections. So that's really kind of where I've got to get that. And I love the little heart balloon of this painting. And you can see the reds are just much stronger for what we painted underneath. Now I'm going to come in and add a bunch of white to my mix and start to blend this center where it's a little bit highlighted in the balloon. So the center of this balloon and this little parts here, those will be lighter than other parts of the balloon. Right. Well, that's how we're going to create that sense of it's light. I'll just use this to blend, blend, blend. When acrylic paint is wet, that's the easiest time to blend those values together and give that um, kind of a look. Now, at this stage, and I don't want to call it a whole new step, let's dry this um, and we'll just kind of 
like make it easier for you. You you dry it at home. I'm gonna dry it. We'll and then we'll come back and we'll put the next layer on. It doesn't need a whole new step. No, but just keep. Hey, going. could I've said that more awkwardly? I don't think I could have. So once that's dry, that gives us the substructure to create a lot of values. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes in acrylic paint, it's knowing when something that needs to be dry that makes a big difference. <laughs> I think we we have a Twix and a shortcake. I mean, let's uh, let's put them in the other room. We got to put them in the other room. All right, I'm gonna go here, and you're gonna you you finish that that stroke, and then we'll put them. <laughs> you two. They're playful. I started painting, I so can't even reach them. <laughs> reach them I, stop. They're, they're not like, fighting. They are playing. They're playing, and they're I just. I promise. All right, so we're gonna start again. We had to do a little edit because there was a bit of dog noise. <laughs> And I'm going to show this step over this part of the step over again. I needed to do it anyways. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red Quinn magenta mix together and mix with some white, making a very light color. Okay. Right, on the same brush, and I'm going to just come in here and there's not a lot of water on my brush, and so this is almost like a dry brushing. And I'm going to come in the center of the balloon, dry brushing, and then maybe even get to another lighter. Kind of area, and you can see I'm just coming here, and maybe a little bit right there. Look at that. Just a little bit of dry brushing. I'm going to rinse out. Rinsing out, John. Rinse. And dry off so the brush is not wet, wet, wet. Uh-huh. Come in with maybe a little more quinacridone. And kind of with like a little curving stroke, come in from the edge. Oh, that gives it that very dimensional. Balloony. Dimensional. dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> you can still hear him playing in the other room. <laughs> Short, short cake's got a voice on her. She really does. There's no uh, editing around it. Uh, it's love is in the air. Between the, the doggies, too. They're playing. They're playing. All right. So let's do that. And then um, we're going to let that completely dry before we go on to the next step. But really, it's just about creating that lightness in the center and darkening the edges, working with your cad red and your chronicle magenta and your titanium white. Okay, so if you got the balloon in, we got the balloon in, the balloon. basic. We still have one more, like, highlight, but I like to save the highlights to the last bit so I can highlight, like, all the things that need a highlight. Mm -hmm. um, so let's do the nose real fast. Yes. All right, so I've got cad yellow uh, medium added to the palette. I'm going to put out a little more titanium white. Yeah. Uh, this painting, because there's so many pinks and, and light colors, it uses a lot of titanium white. That's a good color. Yeah, it's a very good color. I'm going to get my big number eight. Medium size round brush here. And I'm going to take a little of my cad red over to my yellow. Makes kind of like a little orange. And then we start to add white to it. You can see it just kind of gets us right into that blush tone pretty quick. I have all kinds of videos on how to do flesh tones with these colors. So mm. if you just need some extra help with that, we've got that. Now I'm going to come here. Make sure that I've got a nice little kind of nose started. It's a, more of a flesh tone than you would have thought, huh? Yeah. I also think it's like a good idea to come in with a slightly darker color and come on underneath. And really, that's all I've got to do for the nose. That one's pretty simple. While I'm here, I could go in and work the frock and the hands. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take my cad red and a lot of my titanium white. And I want a very, very light color. Very, very light. And I'll just use the number eight round. It's fine. And I'll come over the sleeve and just sort of paint that in. Come on the other side as well. 
And I just want to make sure that the mittens are about the same size. Yeah. Same length on the, the arms as you do. As you do. As we all do together, right? In theory. And then uh, just to make sure that. Just. To... Yeah, that it looks good. Nice and filled out. Yeah, even though we know we've got flowers and flowers and flowers there, that's just a nice touch to have. And I can even start putting in maybe some of the highlights in the hat. Oh, yeah. So let's get a little bit of the white onto our brush. We've got the pink here. And let's uh, come in the center here. Add a little highlight. Maybe put a little highlight in the center. I just love the pink. Yeah. And I'll wiggle my brush out. So I'm making a little irregular shape up here. Right? Look, so I go over from the right and I kind of wiggle towards the center. Yeah. Making a little irregular shape. And then I'll get into more red. Kind of blend them together. Ooh. A little more white through here. Blend that as well. And the nice thing about the cad red and white as the uh, color combo is it makes all of this little adjusting super easy. You could use a bright here or a round. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Not dissimilar to what we did up in the heart, really. As you blend this, those those undertones that are showing through the, the blues and the reds combine to make interesting little shadow folds. Yeah, they really do. A little more red there for the side of the hat. It's all about the layers. Right, and so I'm just kind of keeping this highlight in the center here. Just work the toe. All right. See, so I'm just working that center of the hat there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I'm going to come back in with my quinacridone and cad red. To the hat? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, that makes the little edges pop. And just sort of brush those little shadows in. Maybe a long line there and come back here. You can see, put a little fold there. Kind of fold the fabric across. And I'm using that with the dark paint, you know? Yeah. Going to the white over here. Oh, you know who came and visited? Mm. Troublemaker. Oh, she did. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Forget her? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to go over to our alcohol wipes. <laughs> Sometimes she just feels a little bit like she's got to get a little hug. Yes, always while we're painting. Always while we're painting. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. Even when I'm like practice painting. Oh, she's like totally cuddling it too. She's like, I'm doing that cute thing where you have to hold me a really long time. All right, just come brushing across. Okay, sweetheart, I got to. Oh, I love you. Good girl. 
Everybody saying, no, 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 she's a good girl. Girl tricks. Good girl. Oh, she's, she's a bad dog. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> That's okay, though. Come across a little more magenta, you know, just kind of play with these. Shortcake's the more elusive one. I'm going to kind of loop that back, kind of mm, pull that fabric like... maybe a little bit. If I like that. Shortcake doesn't make uh, appearances on screen because she's, she's still too fast. <laughs> she is. Well, she doesn't want to be caught. That's always her thing. Like, don't catch me. So that's looking pretty good, but I'm going to keep adding some highlights to that. I know everyone's going to ask about her. Mm. They're going to say, where's Shortcake? And I'll uh, be like. Faster than us. Skittering away. On her teeny tiny little legs. <laughs> <laughs> she gets no traction in the rear end. None. Totally slides around behind her. Just adding a little highlight on the side. She's figured out how to slide into walls sideways to get going in the direction she wants to go. You know, and you just take a look at that and be like, you know, is that what you like? Are you happy with that hat? I'm pretty happy with that. It looks like it's got little fabric folds. It's it's a little whimsical. It's a maze hat. It's a what? A maze hat. Okay. Now I'm worried about the hat. <laughs> no, it's an amazing hat. It's oh. also a maze. Not a maze. See, it's an amazing hat. A maze hat. A maze. That's it. Play with that. I like some it. nice little reflections there, and it kind of ties in well with the balloon, so that works out really, really well. All right, let's dry that completely, and when we come oh. back, we'll hit the next area. All right. So as we continue on with our gnome love angel or angel of love gnome, I don't know wherever we go with that. Uh, we want to just keep refining these details and adding more fun stuff to it. So let's yeah. just hop right into that point space. And I want to get back into this brush. I really like this brush, just the number eight. And I'm going to mix my Cad Red and Quinacridone. All right. And I'm going to come in and very carefully paint the mitten. Oh. Yes. There we go. The mitten. <laughs> this is a little shape. So just kind of downward on the hand, and then you make, just make sure you've got a little thumb there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Just want to make sure that they're somewhat, mitten. you know, yeah, on the same thing. He got a he, he got or both mittens from the same pair. Yeah, arm or arms belong to the same body. <laughs> So oh, if yeah. I make one longer, i got to go make the other one longer. That's the oh, thing that I always look with. I didn't see that. I was only thinking, like, sometimes I get I get the wrong sock. Look, so chances are the mitten, the second mitten, will get covered by the roses, but we don't know at this stage. That's true. So at this stage, what we want to do is just make sure... There are mittens. That there are mittens. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my black and white. All right. And I'm going to come here, like maybe off center here. Make a little heart. Oh, yeah. Got a little heart of love on that. Oh, that little heart got bigger, so I'm going to make the whole heart bigger. The, the love is growing. The love is growing on this art. Gotta just keep going bigger. It's okay. Couldn't contain it all. Couldn't. But it's nice to have this nice little um, kind of heart here. It just It's an accessory. It's a pin or something, right? Hat accessory. It's a hat accessory. I have hat pins. All gnomes should have hat accessories. This brush tends to carry too much water. Mm-hmm. So I've got to watch that on this brush all the time. Sneaky brush. It's a sneaky brush. So I have my towels here to the side, and then if I notice that it's doing that, I've got those to ah. kind of wipe it off. And Gotcha. Yeah. You know. But there we got the gray heart starting to, you know, be there. Yep. Let's do a nice little second heart up here. 
Oh, yeah. We'll come and paint those white in a little bit, as you do. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to rinse out, and I'm going to get some white on my brush and kind of come to the top of the nose. And add a little bit of a reflection there. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Got to have a nose highlight. Maybe a little bit coming up the hat. It's also a nice time to come in... Uh, Add a bit of a reflection on the balloon. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's a good idea where you're tying the knot to put a little reflection as well. Oh, yeah. Still letting everything dry here. Making sure that this doesn't run. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side. And then while all of this is having a dry, I'm going to take my uh, bright brush I had from earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and take a very light pink. Right, so that's a super, it's still pink, but it's just very, very light, lighter than what I have. Just kind of dry brush this across. Give those arms and stuff some rounded highlights. Yeah, just kind of, kind of improve it a little bit. Look at that. Does rounded look pretty highlights. good, doesn't it? Yeah. And again, we're going to have a lot of flowers, so don't get too... Just enough to give it some <laughs> shape. I keep saying that, but it's really important. Now, while all this is here, let's dry this. We're going to do that in the same step. We're not going to change steps for drying, and then we're finishing out the details. Okay. So for this to work, sometimes layers have to be dry, and sometimes they have to be wet. It's always really important to, when you're painting along, pay attention to, does this layer need to be dry? Does this layer need to be wet? I'm going to get a number four round. That's a much smaller round than this one. It's going to give me some detail work, right, like they do. And I'm going to come get some quinacridone. I'm going to come under the heart and cast a little shadow using oh, the red. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. That's actually technically a localized shadow because we didn't just use a, a gray or a black. Oh, oh, say that again? Localized shadow. In other words, local color uh, informs us of what the shadow is. It's a fun Ooh. thing to know. Come here, maybe glaze the mitten a bit. And across. What was that called again? <laughs> local the color. Local shadow? Yeah, it's local, it's local color for the shadow. So, like, if you've got trees and they're casting shadow over grass, you wouldn't put black over the grass. Ideally, you would grab a darker green. Mm. Right. So, just it's just in that next step up, something to think about. Neat. I'm going to come and get a little of my... So Peter Pan had a non-local shadow. Dude. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely not local. <laughs> it was a free-rangey little shadow. And come underneath the nose here. Sometimes it's nice to, uh, you know, create that, like, little element of shadow here. All right. This is dry. I can come back um, maybe with a smaller brush just so yep. I have some control over it. I'll come in with like a, like this little number four bright yeah. and put out some more white on here. You guys doing good? I know you are. I like this a lot. Okay, let's just, I haven't even gotten it wet because I'm going to dry brush here. Oh. All right, so I didn't even get it damp. You're just straight from the tube. Right from the tube, dry brushing it on. Mm -hmm. Give it that sort of very rough look. And that lets a lot of the gray kind of show through too. Now sometimes I have to work the corner of the brush to have control over how it paints around. Yeah. But like that lets me get a little bit of, you know, value going. We can have some nice white hearts on there. I'm going to rinse out, as you do. Mm -hmm. Last thing, I'm going to get a little of my red, same bright. 
And I'll just come over on my Minton oh, down there. and just add a little pop of color. I see, yeah. That's so just a bright and exciting Minton. It is a exciting. bright and exciting Minton. It needs to be a bright and exciting Minton, right? Maybe I'll come across here and add a little excitement to the hat. Ooh. Sometimes I like to add a little color to something. Just be like, oh, hey, how you going? All right. So let this dry thoroughly before the next step. And I'll show you what we're going to do next. It's going to be really fun. So now I get to put some fun stuff in. I always like putting in flowers. I want to get the kite string in first because the flowers are the final layer. Oh. Right. So a lot of what we're doing here is making sure that we have everything ready for the final layer. I'm going to take a detailing brush. This is a number one monogram liner. I actually sign with this most often. Yeah. But it also is a nice fine lining brush. I'm going to take drops of water over to my black and thin it. My other option is to buy black that is pre-thinned or to use a paint pen. Hmm. You know, whatever works for you guys better, but I'm going to do it with paint. Just getting that little water thinned. And basically, first I'm going to come down and put a little bit of the string coming out here. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that that sort of shows as a mitten hand. Just kind of connect that string up. Mm. Do, now, I heard once somewhere, John, that there's a limit of how much helium exists in the world and that we may be out of helium soon. Uh... It's a, well, yeah, that's, that's sort of true. Sort of true. Yeah. Can, I mean, provisionally like there's, true. There's limited supply of everything on earth. And the way that we currently get helium is through a process of hydrocarbon cracking, which we're not really doing as much of anymore. And so that supply. Is it super dangerous? Is super bad. Um, so as I understand it, that helium supply is it's limited, is limited in our availability to it. <laughs> Reasonable. I don't fully understand that though i mean like but that's just my that's just your understanding as uh, it is right and i could be wrong could so. be wrong and if we are just tell us in the comments below we don't care we, we love the comments our... um <laughs> <laughs> no cuss because the, the filtration system will get it have cuss words like filtered but hmm. you know I'll, i you can say what you want to say as long as you say it reasonably and politely and conversationally um i'm gonna add some flowers john Gonna Let's do add that. Some flowers. I'm gonna grab my big round brush again. The, I the put one out you, same one. Some new colors. Yeah, the number eight. I put out the quinacridone, the cad red, a little more of that. I have my titanium white, cad yellow. I now added thalo green and burnt sienna, and I've got my thalo blue and Mars black. So I think oh, I'm gonna paint the flowers first. And generally, on my simple roses, I like to go darker in the center, and then I lighten them as I go out. Right. Let's even put a little yellow into that. I like to get all kind of woo with these. Mm -hmm. So it's much more CAD. We're going to make sure we don't have what? Too much water in our brush, right? Ah. Don't need no drippy roses. Nope. That's no fun. And I'll pick, like when I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I kind of am thinking about how these roses might cover the mittens placement of the roses yeah so watch this here let me show you here okay. i'm going to come here and do a bigger one i'm going to have the the forward face of it be kind of towards this wing i start with a small series of circles and then i just bring in larger circles going around it i see I, these are kind of like messy roses or decorative roses uh they're like a very beginner rose and that doesn't mean that it won't be frustrating or you won't need to work at it um, just because something's kind of focused towards beginners, I'm going to go stroke down, stroke down, to the side, to the side. Doesn't mean it's just always going to be perfectly easy, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go around. We're just going to fill these up with roses. Just bigger circles around. And these really come together when you f add highlights and things. That's when they fill in and really become kind of special and wonderful. I'm going to kind of do an open one here. So how I do the opens is I just pull down, pull down, pull down, and then kind of across, and then I'll make that 
with highlights. Again, another type of flower. Let's put one facing this way. And again, I'm going to cover up some of the beard. So remember how I was like, don't put your heart and soul into some of this area? Because mm -hmm. there's going to be flowers. This is what we mean. So the smaller circles are facing, right, mm -hmm. to the left. And the bigger circles and stronger brush strokes where I press harder are facing uh, towards that right side. And that's how I make the rose feel like it's perhaps, you know, interesting. got its head facing that direction. You have a rose plan. I always sort of have a rose plan. Um, I'm going to kind of put little pops of red that imply buds, as you do. Mm -hmm. See, and whatever I do, like around the roses, I can fill in with greenery Ooh. or other flowers. It really is fine. Shrubbery. And they're just blobs at this stage. If you feel like your roses are blobs, you're, you've are you got it. <laughs> they're just shaped blobs. They're directional shaped blobs. Directional right? blobs. They're directional blobs. They're blobs with a plan. Right, kind of got a smaller one up here. Maybe a little one there. I know I'm going to put some leaves in. I just kind of like to fill in. I like to have some variance in size if I can. Once I get that, what do I do? I get right into my white. Okay. And I come in on the centers. And just highlight some of the petals. It's just impressionistic. See, small strokes towards the center, and then as I push out, still heavier strokes. Now, a lot of people have anxiety when they paint flowers. It's not uncommon. And that's because uh, they have an idea of flower paintings and that they have liked in the past or that impressed them, and they want to paint those flowers. But there's a lot of ways to paint flowers, right? And there really isn't a right way or a wrong way. Okay, these are looking, they're okay, they're doing all right, but I'm going to rinse out, and I'm going to put out some more white, and I'm going to put out some more quinacridone. Right. The trick with your messy, messy roses is to just hang in with them long enough. you got to hang in with them. Right. I'm going to switch to my number four round, this one right here. Get it wet. Get my dark color on here. I'm darkening the centers. A dark center on that one. Come in with like maybe a bright yellow later. Circular, circular. Mm. It's kind of messy. Yeah. All right. But as you add those colors and you add those centers, they become more and more rose-like. They really out. do. They take on their rose shape. They do. They take on their rose shape. I'm going to get my brush wet and rinsed out, and I'm going to get a very light pink. Right? 
add some highlights to the outside. Just breathe. So I'm going to come here. Let's, let's put a little petal right there. It's hard, okay? Mm -hmm. Once you get it, then you'll be like, oh, I got it. First getting it. These are probably the more challenging ones where they're open. Oh, yeah. You just keep curving those around. A lot of times they end up looking like cinnamon buns. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That is okay. Some curving, curving, curving. All right. I like them. They're looking pretty good. They're okay. Yeah. They're all right. Now what are we going to do? Rinse out. Green? Get No, our small, small brush. Oh, we got to do the littlest parts. Littlest parts. And we're going to come in. This is why you're the teacher and I'm not. <laughs> sure. I mean. Because <laughs> I don't know what we're doing next. All right. I'm going to come here and we're just adding these little bright centers. Right? Like little tiny petals where the highlights have caught the petals. Just playing with them, right? Mm -hmm. Look at them. They just play. And they just look more and more like roses as you go. They do. Now, there is a point where the rose is wet, and then every layer of paint that you put on it is just more mixing into it. Mm. So at this stage, I highly recommend you dry before you do anything else. So let's do that. Let's dry. Mm -hmm. We'll keep it in the step, and then we'll come back and keep going. So if you've dried, then you should be able to touch it, and it should feel dry to the touch, which means you can come in and put just a couple final little highlights on some of these roses. Not too much water, though. That's what i got to keep watching for with this brush. Great for doing big stuff fast, but, boy, it over-moisturizes. All right. Come in and try to make sure that some of these just feel a little more petaled. Oh, yeah. Little highlights. It's amazing how it just, it, you, what you've got to do is just not panic. That's what I find really throws people off with their flowers is they kind of get like stressed in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And they give up before the full flower comes to them. Don't give up. Be patient. Let the flower bloom. Let the flower bloom. And you can see it's that little last highlight really pulls those roses in. But I'm not painting the brush strokes close together. I'm leaving them open. I'm letting them kind of brick and interweave. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to paint out everything I put in before. And I don't necessarily hit every, like, the little ones I might leave pinker. Gotcha. Now, in the center of the little kind of open ones, I'm going to go ahead and take a little yellow, maybe even a little white, and come in the center here. Just sort of. Put some of that in the little center. And it's just a little, it's like it's a little touch. It's just a bright little bit of something. Yeah. You can get a little white and yellow. Just trust yourself. You're good. Now, I want this thoroughly, thoroughly dry. 
And when we come back, I will show you how to add the leaves that fills this out and puts this cutie pie in the garden. So I think the part that's going to make this really pop is the leaves at the end. The green against the pink is going to be really lovely. I have a green that I tend to mix, which is the phthalo green with burnt sienna and a little bit of cad yellow. I'll talk to you about my tips around that on how you get a better green. If you just add white to green, you tend to get a mint, which is awesome when you want it and terrible when you don't. I know you've got it. If you've been feeling anxiety about your roses, I want you to take a deep breath. Let them out. Your messy roses are perfectly fine. Uh, and don't don't feel stressed or bad. It's always okay to practice the technique before you put it on the canvas. Yeah, and it really is about the feeling of the roses and not about the roses being perfect. It is super true. It's and once right. you get it together and all in there, then look at it with all the le all the leaves in. So don't don't stop here. Keep going. All right. So I'm taking my phthalo green and mixing a little burnt sienna in. Little yellow snuck in. Little yellow snuck in, but it didn't hurt me. I'm just making a nice dark green. Phthalo green tends to be a bit transparent. And I'm going to come here and kind of pull in some flower petals. Oh, yeah. These are the dark colors. I love the I'm flower petals. I'm just pressing, pulling yeah. little brush strokes in. Leaves. leaves. Yeah, little leaves. They provide such contrast. It's super awesome. Right. It provides like this. I'm tucking it in. Sometimes I do the leaves first and then tuck the flowers around the leaves. And sometimes I'm lifting up. I'm going to lift this up so that my um, I can get to the edge of my canvas easier. Oh. I see. All right, so doing the dark color first. And then we'll come back and add the light colors. Grand Sienna and Thalo Green. Okay. Just pressing and pulling, you know, not that worried about it. Just making some fun little little leaves. Well, they're fun for me. Mm, I think they're fun. Um, if you want to know more about these types of brush strokes, I have actually a class on brush strokes that teaches messy roses and leaves in my beginner acrylic painting course, but you could just do the brush stroke video if you want a little extra insight on how we get those done. You can see that it's kind of nice to tuck in leaves around the flowers. When you get the dark green on like that, and that looks pretty good already, we're not doing bad. You look for any like holes that are bothering you. And then you're going to add your yellow, your green to your yellow. So it's the phthalo green and a little burnt sienna, and I come and lighten with my yellow and make the first kind of bright green that I would have there. And I tend to do three values. So this is the second middle value of green. I don't want to paint out all my dark green. Otherwise, I won't have any contrast. So I make sure to leave some of that showing underneath. You can see the layers are just really wonderful. Oh, and yeah. this bright green helps the deep green kind of really pop and find its zazz. Mm -hmm. It's zazz. It is zazzy. It's zazzy. You guys are zazzy. So just know that. In case you were wondering. You're super you zazzy. You got some zazz. We all have zazz. Someone's partner just walked by and was like, what, what? are you watching? <laughs> and if it was you, let us know in the comments or during the show. <laughs> was it your partner that just went by and was like, what are you, what's that on your show? What? It's about the third time they do that that they sit down and go, all right, I'm going to listen. <laughs> and then they're... then And they add some more yellow and get some white into it. Yeah, I like to get the light green lightened with the yellow first. That's right. And this is how we get that final color. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes John's in the middle of running a joke and I'm like teaching and I just talk <laughs> over him. <laughs> well, because I have to do it while the pain You're is the, at a certain place. So. Look, I'm the student in the front row heckling the teacher. You really are. But I love you and I married you, so it's okay. I control yeah. the So you vertical. can see that that third pop just really puts that garden in place, doesn't it? Oops, there we go. I just like to put it all kinds of places. I don't worry about it. You can do little small leaves here and there, mm -hmm. just the toe of the brush, which can be kind of nice. And you just make sure that your objects are tucked in really well. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't really do that mitten that carefully. So what do I do here? I just add some more leaves. <laughs> Leave his mitten alone. Probably I should stop. Oh my goodness! Is is this love gnome not cutie cute cute? I think he's super cute. Okay, it's just a fun little gnome that you can paint. It just really is. It really is cute. I would like this gnome on a mug. A muggy gnome? Is a muggy gnome? Is he a mug gnome? Mm. You could mug up that gnome if you felt like it. But it's just a nice little thing that you can do. All right. When we come back, I'll tell you what's next. So here at this stage, I like to do a little detailing, which just takes the gnome up a notch and mm -hmm. makes him look even better on the canvas. And also, I want to make sure he matches the other gnomes that we've done in the past. Yeah. He's going to be in the gnome playlist. So if you want to see the gnome playlist, you know, we'll have that there. And you can paint all the gnomes that we have. It's quite a lot of gnomes. And there'll be more gnomes to come. So if you like gnomes, <laughs> yay. <laughs> all right. I have put out some fresh black paint, so it's easier to black line. And I put out some white paint, so it's easier to white line. Everything is dry. I'm going to take my uh, monogram uh, liner, and it's like very much a detail brush. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do this interesting little kind of like lining. Oh, yeah. Just to give these a little more um, kind of detail. When you go over to the other side of the canvas, I'll be able to zoom in a little bit more. Okay. Oh, maybe I can there. This is just a nice little in touch that you can do. Oh, it really is. And the uh, it's sort of the unevenness of that line quality, which really adds a layer of organic highlight. It, it does help, and it helps you feel like you're looking at petals. So it's just a nice little touch that one can do. And this is just white on a detail brush. Um, I know you guys are going to be asking me, could I use a Posca pen? Yes! Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could use a Posca pen. Totally acceptable. All right. I'm going to come here and capture the edges of that flower. See how un suddenly it's like a flower? It is. I'm going to come here and maybe add a little bottom petal. Oh, Ooh. it's gorgeous. Because that's what we do. We take it to that next level. And sometimes you know that's what you got to do. You got to take things to that next level. Mm -hmm. If you've been really struggling with your line quality, um, I highly suggest I'm using this is titanium white fluid acrylic by Golden. Ah. I highly suggest that. That's what's making this so easy to do. Mm. But you can see it just, even those little lines, they make a big difference, don't they? Now, you could just water down your regular titanium white, but it and won't. I'm, and I'm going to have to water down my black because I don't have any fluid black. But, but that's possible. Super possible. This is just convenient. I like to just do this bit at the end here in this way. That way I can kind of see what's actually showing. But look how those become open. You know, if you were super, like, wanted to go level two on this. Mm. You could go get those um, T 
tippy things for the pouch paint or the the acrylic. Oh, for the abstract acrylic where they oh, do that. Yeah. And then you could you could put some impasto leaves and <laughs> Yeah, you could probably three dimension it up pretty easily. This is lends itself to that with that foreground of flowers. But now they really start to look at them. They're just oh, looking yeah. like flowers, right? Like when you popping. click this thumbnail, you were like, that's what got you. Now you know how that's done, and it's not probably, you know, other frustrating flowers that you've had to do. So I, I do get a lot of feedback that people get frustrated with flowers. And I think if you keep going and finish it, you can learn a lot more and see. Because oftentimes these things that you could see as a mistake early on turn into something beautiful later, like a petal. Yeah. And see, that's why I just don't get too wrapped up in any of that. But it, you have to kind of go to the completion to get that experiential reference Moment. point. Yeah, you really do. Here we go. This last little one's going to be like amazing. Look at that. It just becomes like this wonderful little forward open petal. Looks pretty good. Looks really good. Yeah, I mean, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this white lighting and make sure I've got a nice little that reflection on the nose and oh, definitely on the balloon. Oh, wait. Oh, there you see. Yeah, I'm just, I don't mean to be moving so fast on oh, you. I'm okay. sorry. I just <laughs> I have to catch up. You're good. Because it's just nice to have those. And then... When I get that all done, we do the black lining. Mm. So I put out the fresh black paint just so it's a little easier to thin because sometimes if paint's been sitting out for a minute in the air, it thickens. And it's very hard to thin. Yes. So you can see if you couldn't buy the titanium white, this would be another way to do that. This is going to be an interesting journey for me. Now, if you needed to, you could use a bridge. Yeah. Or a, you could have a mall stick. Mall stick. I always feel like uh, that's something that uh, an orc would carry. It is. I tend to try to not connect my lines too much. The and the reason line. I do that is your eye visually connects the line. Mm -hmm. And it creates kind of an artful little moment. Remember, this is a painting, right? We're not inking a comic. Sometimes you call it when you get that right a passage. Well, it's a, a passage in a painting is a moment that where the paint is very pretty. Yeah. And I'm, it speaks to you like poetry. And you're looking for that in the line. You are kind of looking for that in the line. Line quality. Every mark on your canvas has meaning. And so, again, I'm getting a fine thing. This is a number one monogram liner. A lot of different it's, companies it's, it's, have a version of this. Right? It just means it's a detailed brush with a long length out. Uh, you can also look for brushes that say uh, micro or micron for miniature painting. Hmm. You, know who has little a bits of line. Huh? you know who has a thought on miniature painting? Who? Jazza. Oh, that's true. Paints a few of those. Just did a... He's a good painter and sculptor. Yeah, really good. If I weren't running a TV show... All the time, I would sculpt with him. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, but I actually pretty enjoy doing this. I push buttons. Well, you know, what you, what you need. <laughs> Both spiritually and physically. All day. All day. Just, I mean, what more? I know it because I hear about it in the comments. <laughs> what, that I push your buttons all day? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry. Not really, but I mean, like, you know, a little bit. Not really. I'm not that worried about it. And come here and kind of. In perfect honesty, sometimes I'm just keeping Sherpa on her toes. No, it has to. Otherwise, I could just disappear she, into my she mind. She just, like, goes into the line. <laughs> <laughs> it just disappears. Her <laughs> yeah. brain disappears into the line. Oh, the line. I have a little Carol Ann moment there. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> and a group of people got that joke. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, pop, 
culture aside. Just nice there. It just says these are little details, right? I want my two dollars. You can't even find that movie on Apple. I know. It's gone. They took it down. You know what? Eros, oh, is it? Uh... Oh, that lining is nice. You got me. You said something. What did I say? <laughs> that lining is nice. <laughs> that lining is nice. It distracted me from what I was about to say. Let's get a little bit in there, yeah? That looks pretty good. A little heavy on the nose, but that's all right. Oop, there we go. A little bit coming off here on the beard. Okay. I think we got it, man. I think that's I think It's just amazing. a weird, cute little gnome. It is a it's gnome. gnome gnome. Gnomed it. Gnomed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and I don't I wouldn't I don't normally sign in like uh really strong colors, but in this particular case, since I've already got the black out, it's that Give or it white. The old stamp of approval. I don't know. I don't really approve of it to like see it. how the students do, and if they do great, then I approve of it. And, and if you guys have a hard time, then I question. Um, like I really go look at it and go, where did I not teach it? I hope that everybody paints this one good because this one's a. I like this note. This is one of my favorite gnomes. Is that one of your favorite gnomes? Yeah. <laughs> he's the love is gnomes. This, the, this guy. He's the will you be my Valentine gnome. He is. Look at him. You can, see the, hope, you can see the hope coming from underneath the, the, the hat. It's just creeping <laughs> out. He's in front of all the roses. He's like, I love you. Well, I can't wait to see yours. And if you would like to share your painting with me, we have a private closed Facebook group for sharing paintings from these classes. Um, you can share them on the website, theartrippa.com, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, and TikTok. All, and, and even uh, Discord. That's right. So, Don, Don is in charge of Discord. Yes. In general, <laughs> yes, I am. General. So um, definitely share any of those places with me. I really appreciate it. Um, any thoughts? I love you guys. Love. Here's my thought on love. Self-love first. You cannot give what you do not have. It is important to know how to love yourself so you can love others in strength and confidence. And most importantly, I want you to be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I'll see you. You. And then he's all really soon. Bye-bye.